Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump.com. Welcome to our new tutorial on photo animation with After Effects. I just want to say right off the start today that you might notice a little bit of stuffiness in my voice. I am actually a bit under the weather today, but I wanted to make sure I got a nice tutorial out today. So it's going to be a short one, but it's a lot of fun. So a few years back, I worked on a visa campaign for the Olympics. And sorry, this isn't the best quality, but it's the best I could find. That makes us root for them. And you're going to see here that there's a really nice slow motion effect to these photos. Instead of being stills, it feels like they've been filmed at 240 or 500 frames a second. It's just it's a moment slowly frozen in time. And I think it's a very powerful, very effective ad, and I enjoyed working on this job quite a bit. And so what we'll do today is talk about how we made that ad and how you can recreate this kind of an effect on your own. We succeed. So let's take a look at the piece we're going to make today. I felt that keeping it within a sports theme was pretty appropriate. And being a fan of hockey, I found, you know, there's this great photo of Bobby Orr flying through the air after he wins the Stanley Cup championship. And so this is the photo we'll use to recreate that effect. So the first place this is going to start is here in Photoshop. And what we're going to want to do is start separating out these images the same way you would work on a paint out. And there's a little more in-depth explanation of how this all works over in the After Effects Bootcamp on paint outs. But we'll do kind of a quick re-overview and just kind of go through this part fairly quickly. So I'm just going to use the pen tool here and I'm just going to kind of go around Bobby. And you want to make sure you do this pretty tightly. You don't want to leave a lot of extra haloing and you don't want to eat away at it too much. So, you know, take your time and make sure this looks good. So to help this not be the bulk of the video is me clicking a lot of points. Uh, I think we'll go to a little bit of a super speed right here to get you through this. And as you can see, all I'm doing is just trying to trace this as closely as possible. And it's not going to take too long. And the more you do this type of stuff, the faster it ends up going. Okay, now that we've got Bobby completely traced out here, I'm going to come over to my paths and I'm going to control click to get a selection. And then I'm going to come up to select and I'm going to do a refine edge. And this is a great little tool if you haven't used it before to help you clean up a little bit of the look because right now it's very sharp and looks very cut out. So if we kind of come in and give After Effects an ability to smooth out the edges, do a little bit of feathering. You can see that now the edge looks much, much nicer than it did before. A lot more of a realistic cutout. So let's go ahead and say OK. We've got our selection. We'll copy, paste it back in. And we'll name this layer Bobby. And so now that we've got Bobby separated, we need to come in with our stamp tool. And we'll go ahead, maybe increase this to 100. And I'm going to select the area right underneath them and start coming in and painting out. Now, how much of Bobby we're actually going to need to paint out is going to depend a lot on how much of the move we want to do on the photo. But since most of what he's going to be painted out to is white, you know, it's going to be a pretty simple job to just come in 
and paint them out completely. Now, when it gets to areas like this here, around where his arm and his foot are, where he's over the crowd, you want to make sure you line up your, your stamp tool pretty closely to that edge. Because when it starts to bend, it becomes very noticeable to your eye. And fortunately, this whole crowd back here is pretty out of focus. So it's going to be pretty easy to come in and just wipe out the stick blade and the arm. Let's go ahead and finish kind of doing that. Let's come in quickly and paint him out. And we want to be a bit careful here because we don't want to lose too much of our defensemen. But now what we can do is come back here, let's do a bit of a close-up, and let's shrink that brush down to about half that size. Line it up, and we'll start painting Bobby out from over the pants. And you can see the stamp tool really does make very short work of this type of this type of a paint out. Now over here, I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna bring my brush hardness up a bit maybe 75%. I'm gonna come in and just paint out the black area here. Make sure that Bobby's completely gone. Now, when I put Bobby back over, looks like he was never, never missing. And we've got an element that we can move around. So for the rest of this picture, let me pull up my Photoshop. And you'll see we have Bobby separated, we've got Noel, the defenseman, separated, we've got our goalie separated. And you can see here I didn't con finish completely painting out the goalie area because I knew that the area that I had painted out probably wasn't going to see beyond that. So there was no need to spend the extra time there. We've got the forward skater's leg here and we've got the puck. And then we've got a pretty clean background that we can layer all these elements back into. So once we've got all that cut out, we can come over here to After Effects. We'll import our Photoshop document as a composition, and we'll get something that looks like this. And this is just the Photoshop layers re-imported back into After Effects. So you'll see again the background, the puck, skater's leg, goalie, defenseman, and Bobby. My photo was a little larger than the standard video frame, but that's okay because that's going to give us a little extra resolution to work with. And I'm going to come in and just change this to a 1920 by 1080 comp. And let me just pull back a little bit so I can have some room to look at it. And the first thing I want to do is just make everything, oops, make everything a 3D layer. And I'm also going to turn on motion blur for all those layers make sure my motion blur switch is on here and if I come into advanced I'm gonna change this to 720 shutter angle I want a very wide shutter angle so I want as much motion blur as I can get but the key to this effect is to not overly move everything so I'm gonna create a camera at a 50 mil and I'm gonna start pushing things around in 3d space so if I bring up position, I'm going to take the background, put it back about a thousand units. I'm going to scale it back up to match. And then the puck, maybe put that back 500 units. I'll scale that back up. 
skater's leg. I'd like a little be a little more foreground, so maybe go minus 250, and we'll scale that back down. The goalie probably leave right at zero. I think he's in between those two things. And our defenseman, we'll say maybe negative 500. Scale him. And Bobby himself, we'll say negative 750. And we'll scale him back down. So now, if I come over to my camera controls, I have a nice 3D scene to work with. And you can see here, the layers are pretty appropriately in 3D space. Although, actually no, that defenseman's leg, or the skater's leg over here definitely needs to move. This should definitely be much further in front. So let's say negative 1000 on that. And we'll go ahead and scale him back down. There we go. Now everything's moving in appropriate 3D space. So the next thing we want to do is add a little animation to this. And I'm going to not only animate the camera by animating the position and the area of interest, I think maybe we'll start it a little down here. And we'll zoom in and come over. Kind of focus it more on the flying bobby. There we go. So we've got a little animation on the camera. Let's put a little bit of animation on the puck. Now if the puck is bouncing back out of the goal, we'll just have it start where it is. Then we'll just move it out a bit. There we go. And we'll grab our defenseman here. And let's go ahead and have him start back a little bit. We'll have him skate into position there. Oh, and we do have an intersection here with the goalie. So let's go ahead, bring him forward until he's just above. And we'll scale him back down. There we go. Want to make sure that goalie stick is in the right place. So the last thing I want to do with just straight positional movement is Bobby himself. So the end here, I think I like that as his end position. So we'll just start him back a bit in X. And let's go ahead and take a preview and see how that motion looks. Remember, we're looking for something subtle, so I didn't want to move everything too much. I want everything to slightly glide, which it definitely looks like it's doing. So that's good. Now the next thing I want to do is use the puppet tool. And I'm just going to come in and add a bunch of points here. If you're familiar with rigging in 3D, all these points I'm setting up are going to seem pretty familiar because they'd be the same joints that I would put onto any 3D character. And I want to grab all of my pins and move them to the first frame. I'm going to come out to my tenth frame here and then I'm just going to very subtly Again, move these things. I'm not looking for anything super big in the movement. And I want the movement to feel very subtle. Oh. Just enough of a very, very high speed camera. Let's take a look. There we go, that's nice. You can see that front arm is falling down. The back arm is still moving up a little bit. 
definitely gives you an impression of just a very short amount of movement stretched over a very long period of time. Now for the animation part of that, we're really kind of done. This is exactly how those Visa ads were made. It was splitting them up into 3D space, little puppet animation, especially if you notice on something like the flags where we did a little more, but the subtle human movement was left just very, very minor, just like this. So the big part of it is the treatment. And so to get that going, the first thing I'm gonna do is drop in a couple of grain overlays. And I'm gonna make them two because I want it to be fairly heavy. This is a old timey photo look. So I just wanna make sure there's a lot of grit and grain in that image. Next thing I'll do is add a little vignette to the top of it. And I'll just double click. Set it to the subtract mode. Feather it on out. And bring down its intensity a bit. Don't want it to be too overpowering. Just want to feel a little bit of focus shift here. And let's go ahead and maybe move it over like this. That way the focus is really on the area Bobby's in. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and bring a little blur to that background. And I'm just gonna steal the mask right here off the vignette. Drop it on the background. And I'm gonna grab a camera lens blur. Set it out to about maybe 20. Turn on the repeat edge pixels, maybe 20 is too heavy. There we go, 10. And maybe on this one, I will bring the mask in a little bit, just so that I can see a little bit more of that blur right around them. Really help punch them out of the background. So the next thing I want to add are these two bokeh effects, and they're just filmed bokeh effects that I've got. And a lot of the look came out of these types of stock footage. I'm gonna set them both to screen. And I'm gonna reduce them to about 60%. because I don't want too much flashing, but I want it to be present. And then I'm gonna come in and make a solid in kind of that golden yellow area. And I'm gonna set that as an overlay. And again, come back, pull it down a little bit. There, around 60% looks about right. And now that I've got kind of my main color in, I'm just gonna drop a new adjustment layer just below my vignette and I'm gonna grab curves to just add a little more punch. Just wanna bring those blacks down a bit without sacrificing too much of the bright white areas of the ice. And then I'm gonna come in, drop in another adjustment layer, and I'm gonna add a glow above that. And this will just help us add a nice haze or halo around everything and kind of unify the whole piece. So I'll bring my threshold up until it's just affecting the areas that I'd like it to. Then I'll blur it out quite a bit in the radius and maybe take down the intensity just a touch. So you can see, it just helps to add that nice haze and glow to the image. Let's go ahead and take a preview, see where we're at. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I think what I'd like to do is punch up these smaller pieces here a little more. Maybe put those back up to 80. And let's take a look again.
There we go, that's looking better. Now the final thing that we did when we did the visa spot is added camera flashes. And I'm gonna add my camera flashes just below the blur layer. And this is just another stock piece of footage, just a bunch of optical flare flashes happening. And I'm going to screen this guy and then I'm going to mask it. I'm going to do it on an angle about like that. And what that's going to hopefully give me is the impression of flash bulbs either only going off in the stands or being reflected off the ice surface. So let's say maybe a 150 feather there, just so we don't have anything cut off. And let's take another look. I think that intensity is just a little too high right now. So I'm going to bring that down about 70 and take another preview. There we go. I think that's looking pretty sharp. And that is the entire secrets behind that effect. Now all you need to do is add some inspirational music and get Morgan Freeman to narrate, and you've got yourself a high-end Olympic commercial. And I think that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've learned something that you can use in your work. If you want to keep learning, we have more great tutorials and assets that you can use in your work over at pixelbunk.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.